quantitative business analysis is a business or financial analysis technique that seeks to understand behavior by using complex mathematical and statistical modeling, measurement, and research. By assigning a numerical value to variables, quantitative analysts try to replicate reality mathematically, which is a fancy way of saying that QBA, or quantitative business analysis, is about the art of modeling reality, is about taking what's real and creating a simplified representation of it using numbers. For instance, if I wanted to see how much money I could make burning my own CDs, assuming that I could make music at all, I might create a model such as follows. Say my blank compact disc costs me about 45 cents each. I'm going to charge $5 for my CD and I'm going to sell 100 of them, which would mean my revenue is going to be equal to $5 per CD times 100 CDs. My cost is going to equal to 100 CDs times the 45 cents per CD. And my profit would be the difference between these two. Now this is a very simplified example, but this is a model. And if we change our inputs to say, let's say, 1,000 CDs, or I raise the price to 11.95, I can quickly get rep I can quickly get a representation of what reality might look like if those things were true. What we will cover in this class is the tools that you need to build models, uh, some techniques for addressing some of the major models, uh, income statement models such as the one we're looking at here, what is called a production mix model, and also um, analysis techniques that allow us to look at data in find information within the data. All of your lectures will be provided for you on Canvas. You should watch them the night before class. And unlike a regular class where you do homework in class and you look, look you do homework at home and you look at lectures in class, in this class we'll be doing lectures at home and homework in class where the teacher is available to help you work through them. For those of you who are working on this online, you'll have to do both on your own. But not only will the answers be provided to you, but video walkthroughs of how the question was solved will also be provided to you moving forward. Make sure to take a look at all of the videos and lessons concerning modeling tools before the next class. Thank you. Let's build our first model. Bob sells balloons at the National Mall. He normally charges $1.25 per balloon. He has noticed that there is elasticity between price and demand. In particular, he noticed that for every five cents he increases his price, his demand decreases by 20 balloons. This linear relationship holds for both increases and decreases in price. If Bob charges $1.25 per balloon, he sells 200 balloons per day develop a spreadsheet model that Bob can use. Now the first thing I like you to do is to um, to put the data in the case over to the right so that it's always available to you in the case. So he said his usual price was $1.25 per balloon and then for five cent decrease increases in price his demand decreases by 20. So Price change, 0.05, demand change, it goes down by 20. Now his base price, as we said, was $1.25, and his base quantity, he sells 200 balloons per day, so his base quantity It's 20. It's 200, sorry. Now, we also need to figure out what are the decisions that the model is, is making, i.e., the person that is using the model, what are the things that they get to set um, on their own? And what they're going to be able to set in this particular case is price. So we'll go price. And because it says, develop a spreadsheet model that Bob can use to determine how many balloons he will sell at any given price. So,
price is our decision, and I like to color code it so that it's uh, really easy to see. And um, the base price was $1.25, and we needed to figure out the quantity. Now, this is the type of equation that I call a ratio problem, and we'll go into more detail later on how to solve a ratio problem. But the basics of it are simple. What we need to do is we need to say that our new price minus our base price gives us our change in price. We divide it by the price change and multiply it by and multiply it by the change in demand and add it to our base quantity. This tells us right now our quantity is 200. Now to test this, what I would do is I would take a look and see what happens if I reduce the price if I increase the price by 5 cents because my demand should go down by 20. So at 1.3 and the demand did go down by 20. And if I move it down by 5 cents, my demand went up by 20. So clearly my equation is correct. Um, now finally, um, I, what we're trying to do is increase our, is to maximize our revenue. And revenue, as you know, is equal to price is equal to price times quantity. Now I have a simple model that will allow me to try out different prices for my balloons and see how much money I would actually make at each of these different prices. And to do it automatically we would use something called solver which we'll also go into later but solver allows you to have the program automatically go out and do the work for you. So we're trying to set objective revenue to its maximum by changing the price and we need to set a constraint. For instance, my price needs to be greater than or equal to zero because I'm not giving people refunds in order to get more to order to move balloons. And another uh, constraint is my quantity needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So let's go with those and hit solve. Solver comes back and tells me that my optimal price is 87 and a half cents and at that price I will make three hundred and six dollars.